What's up everyone? It's your friend Keith here at Essex Recording Studios just outside London in England. And today I'm sharing with you my first ever Martin guitar. I've never had one of these before. This one is a D1R. I believe it was made in 94. So this was kind of like an upgrade version from the D1 when it came out. And it's got a solid Sitka spruce top. Gorgeous looking. Look at that texture. Look at, look at the grain. Killer. And it's got rosewood sides and back, thus the R designation. And I believe the back is solid rosewood. Definitely looks like it, especially when you take a peek in here. The grain patterns all match up. And the sides, uh, I believe, are laminate. I'm not quite sure, but I'm sure the experts will chime in and let us know. So going back to this guitar, let's talk about some of its features. You've got these very cool abalone string peg retainers. I actually don't know the technical name of this. I'm sure I can look it up and Google it in a second. But if you want to comment and let us all know anyway, please do so. Pretty much a standard rosette there. Tortoiseshell style pickguard. Black binding, top and bottom. And as we peek inside, you'll see we've got CF Martin and Company, Nazareth, Pennsylvania, made in USA, stamped into the wood, into the bracing there. You've got this nice gold embossed, raised lettered patent pending. Kind of funny, they seem, they seem more proud of the patent than they do of the company name and the fact it was made in America. Kind of kind of weird. I've never, never seen someone so proud of their patent pending status, but they are here. And then over there you see use medium gauge, what does that say? Let me peek in there. Medium gauge lighter strings only. That's a direct order from Martin. Medium gauge lighter strings only. Cool. So now we know what strings to use. We've got the Kind of mother of pearl style uh, dot inlays there. And it's really nice headstock with again the same kind of nice raised gold lettering that we saw in the patent pendant, patent pending. We've got the Martin and Company established 1833. Very cool. All right, and there's little nicks and wear around the edges, little indentations and the lacquer and stuff kind of all over this thing on the headstock you can see little little bits so it's it's been used over the years but you're talking about a guitar that is going on a quarter century old I think it's just got great character I mean uh, Martin in general is just a very classic and traditional guitar and this looks like something that's been used in a traditional manner. I mean, it's got it's got the uh, little pick holder on the top there. All right, and so here's the sides and back. I really like these streaky grain textures that you see here on the sides and going on the back. Just beautiful. And I've never seen a video of a uh, D1R up close in person, so I might be breaking some sort of Guinness World Record here. Well, write about me. Generations to come. What a contribution to guitar history. There's your tuners. They look like your standard issue die cast sealed tuners. The neck wood looks awesome. And uh, that's the guitar. I think you've got a really good idea of what it's like in person. Input jack there. Come down this side of the neck. Cool. 
flip it back over. When it was shipped to me, the, uh, the battery for the pickup, I'll show you where it's retained inside. Well, it was not uh, packed very well. So it came loose and was flying all around inside and uh, the little clip for it broke off where the battery connects. You can see the loose wires there. So it's gonna have to go to the shop and get fixed. But that's where the uh, nine volt for the pickup is. And that's where these wires would, uh, let me get my fingers in there. We get that? that down. There we go. See that bad boy there? And the, the black wire is broken off to the right. You should see it's sitting back there, but it should be connected right where the red one's connected. And that's what happens when you ship these things across a country or a continent and don't, uh, don't tape them. So lesson learned for everyone here. Make sure you get those batteries secured or just take them out when you ship these acoustic guitars. Cool. All right, guys, that's the guitar. I'll show you the case real fast. This is the original Martin & Co. case. Do I have it closed up? Yes, I do. It's got, uh, got a broken latch there. Okay, let's open this up. And you can see this blue interior. Really nice case, actually. And that gives you a good idea of what this guitar is like in person. If you're considering one at your local shop or closer to you online, you can kind of use this video to gauge what the condition and specs are like. Because it's always hard to tell in pictures on the internet, isn't it? And other than that, I'm going to ask you, as I always do, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and click like, leave comments, tell us all about these guitars because uh, I'm pretty knowledgeable, but I know there's internet geniuses out there that know everything about these. You know, they can name the guy who built it, why he built it, how he felt about life on the day he built it, etc., etc. And uh, I just love hearing comments from those people because I learn so much from them. And yeah, we've got our new website up and going. It's www.essexrecordingstudios.com. It's hosted by our friends at Reverb.com. And they've got uh, all our gear up there for sale. It's available to use on recording if you want to come to the studio and record here with me and Mr. James Curtis Thomas. The guy is a wizard producer and an amazing sound engineer. But uh, yeah. We'll see you all soon. I've got many more videos coming your way in the next day or two, so look out for them. Till next time, guys.